my first reaction was a little bit of a shock and thought like, have I made a huge mistake? How do you make a knit pattern book? That is the question that I want to talk about in this video. I released my first ever knit pattern book just this year. It's called Knit This with an exclamation point. And then there's a subtitle, 21 gorgeous everyday knit patterns. And before this, I had never done anything close to writing a knit pattern book. I didn't even consider myself really to be a knit designer. So there was a lot to be learned and I've had quite a bit of requests uh, to share more about the process of making this book. So I did make a video where I showed all the pieces uh, that I have here stacked <laughs> and also wearing the Secret Crush sweater um, and also have some accessories that I have over my workspace. But so I did a video where I showed all the things, all the patterns that you can find in this book, but I haven't really spoken so much about the actual process of creating it and putting it all together. So today I want to sit down and really chat about that. I'm hoping that this will shed some light on things like where do you even start? What is the process of creating a knit pattern book? Um, maybe also tips in creating your own knit patterns. If that is something that you're interested in, maybe you don't really feel confident enough yet. Um, I definitely was not a confident knit pattern writer before doing this book. Now I feel much more confident, even though there's still a lot to learn, but I'm hoping that I can give you some tips there and maybe encouragement also in that area. Uh, and I thought I'd divide this video into sort of the before, during and after. <laughs> so talk a little bit about uh, where this project started, um, how I designed and planned for this whole project of creating this book which took a lot of time and work then uh, I'll talk about actually creating the whole book and making it and what that was like and then also what it's been like after it's been released so grab something nice grab your knitting and let's dive into this video <laughs> So let's start at the beginning. I got approached by a publisher asking if I would be interested in making a knitting book. And I'm pretty sure that this opportunity <laughs> came to me because I had already been talking about knitting and knitwear and sharing my handmade knits on Instagram for years. And then it was just about this time. So I got approached um, by the publisher in 2021, like late summer, like around August. And that was just when I had started to pivot my focus on my YouTube channel and also on Instagram more into knitwear um, from the whole photography tutorial and photography focus that really was the thing for years that I did and shared both on Instagram and YouTube. So I was already starting to sort of pivot my content and focus because I was just sort of getting, well, honestly, a little bit bored <laughs> with the photography stuff and felt um, like creatively quite drained with that. And then I started to make uh, knitting tutorials, talk about knitting here on YouTube um, and also on Instagram. And I think that's the way they found my profile and um, they then suggested this. We had a meeting and for me, it just felt like it was a really good timing because I had also been looking for maybe a project that would span over a longer time because when you create content for Instagram or YouTube or social media, the lifespan of that content is quite short. And then also I will create something maybe maximum, like put in a couple of weeks and then it's done and it's out and it's on to the next thing. So I think I was also craving a project that would take longer planning and it would just be like a bigger challenge in a way. Um, and just have more time and effort and energy put to put in something, take it to a next level, um, the whole creative process. So it came at a really good time. And 
we uh, agree that the book would be published both in Finnish and in English. And for me, I'm actually, my mother tongue is Swedish, so it was easiest for me, actually, even though Finnish is my second language, to write everything in English first. So I wrote all the patterns first in English, then I translated myself some, and then the technical editor that I had helping me with this, me with this um, Heli Rajavara, she also translated some of them. But, I mean, where do you even start? It is now November and uh, five, I've got five and a half more months till the deadline of all of the material for this super exciting project that I'm working on, which is I am making a knitting book. Um, a knitting book, well, basically that means a book with uh, knitwear patterns and designs that are, will all be designed by me and made by me. And this is a super exciting project. I've already been working on it for a few months. <laughs> I started by, um, I knew that I wanted to have around 20 patterns and that's also something that we talked about with my publisher, that around 20 patterns is usually a pretty good amount for a knitting book or a knit pattern book. Um, and then I knew I wanted to have at least half of them be sweaters or cardigans and then the rest like accessories, like I have some socks, beanies, um, mittens and a scarf. Um, so I really sat down and thought about like what is a good collection, like what kind of pieces I really want to have in there. I did some mood boards um, and I started to think about like the color palette. Um, and I knew I wanted to make the book accessible both to people who maybe aren't so familiar with knitting or just starting out so that there are projects that are fairly easy and simple, but still fun and that you can still create something really gorgeous and elegant that you can wear that is really contemporary. In a way contemporary, but also timeless, that is not tied to a specific trend. And then also I wanted to include some um, maybe more intricate, some have some lace or uh, cables or some details um, just to have like that specter. But I wouldn't, wouldn't say that any of the patterns are like super difficult or and all most of them are knitted with like five millimeters. That's a US 8 needle. So most of them are, I would say like fairly simple and beginner friendly in many ways. I'm having to be way much more organized than I feel I usually am and I'm not used to kind of plan this much ahead. So I'm really trying to now make sure that I don't think like, oh, I have too much or I have so much time, but I'm actually trying to kind of be pretty productive, uh, even though I still have technically quite a lot of time still. I worked on the book for almost a year, which is Pretty insane like it's a long time to be working something behind the scenes and not be able or not get to share it which was also uh, that was something I honestly struggled with <laughs> during this whole process even though I did share some and I shared some of the behind the scenes process of knitting for example well, this sweater I did a whole YouTube video on and then the dirty caramel sweater and a bunch of others I did show a little bit um, and also I figured or I've noticed that what I think works when you're working on something um, is that you actually include people into your process and that you just don't go or that you don't hide behind closed doors for six months, work on something and then just boom, it comes out and nobody knew how to anticipate it. So you haven't really built up that hype. So I started to do that and talk about the book, not immediately when I started to work on it, but fairly early, also because I'm so bad at keeping secrets. <laughs> and usually I'm very, very excited when I'm working on something. So then I also think like I need to use that energy. Looking back now, one of the definitely biggest mistakes I did um, and the biggest struggle was, of course, writing the knit patterns. What happened to me was that I would knit something and then I would write the pattern. And often, because knitting and designing is more fun and more natural to me, um, I would do that and then I would procrastinate writing the patterns, which also meant that often I would have like three or four patterns that needed to be written up and also do the test knitting for them and the technical editing. So how it works is that I would write a sample, I would write the pattern for that, uh, knitwear or that sample, then I would also grade it and then I had a technical editor called Heli, Heli Rayavara 
and she went through like um, so technical editing in knitting is basically somebody who goes through and looks at all the mathematics that it's correct um, maybe uh, wants you to clarify something if some instructions aren't really clear and just make sure that the pattern um, is correct essentially <laughs> that there aren't any big mistakes in it um, and then usually what also happens is after that or before that depending on a little bit um, you'll have test knitters who get the pattern and then they have like four to five or four to six weeks depending on uh, the project to complete it so and then that is so so valuable because often there are things that maybe as a uh, knit designer or when you write the pattern is very very um, clear to you or obvious to you but then what says in the pattern might be very confusing or there's something that is missing so all those things then the test knitters and technical editor helps with so there's like a lot of back and forth um, and just making sure that the pattern is as good as can be and of course all of this takes quite a lot of time which <laughs> I noticed that when I was knitting because that also takes a lot of time and of course designing and thinking about all of these things um, that often then I would get kind of this like bottleneck or what do you call it, like in my workflow process that knitting was really fun, designing was fun, um, creating new ideas was fun, but then like writing the patterns, that is definitely a place where I struggled and something I wish I, from even from like the total beginning, from the get-go, I would just have sat down and done it. Today is the 2nd of February. I am working on the bubblegum sweater pattern right now. I'm working on grading it and um, yesterday the whole day I worked on it as well <laughs> realized I did it way too complicated the pattern and now instead I am working on my iPad in this app called knitting chart um, and I'm instead doing like charts for this and this is really something that it's been a steep learning curve working on this book and working all all these patterns because obviously for a book I want there to be plenty of patterns, lots of inspiration, and lots of projects that you can do, but because I'm a very ambitious person, um, I decided to design most of them from scratch and make them into patterns instead of, I mean, I'm gonna do probably some older sweaters that I had already knitted before uh, starting on this book and turn those into patterns, but mostly it's like completely new designs. And even though I've knitted from patterns before, I've done patterns before as well it's still like a whole new level of um, kind of responsibility uh, and just taking care because you can't go and edit it afterwards it's going to be a book so eh, I'm learning a lot I did pick up um, I have this really good book that has helped me a lot which is called knitting patterns no, the beginner's guide to knitting patterns. Um, I was a little overwhelmed at first though, because there's so much to take into consideration. But um, then when I get when I get into it, when I actually sit down or as I'm now on the floor <laughs> and do it, I kind of like it, like the geeky side of me and the numbers and spreadsheets, uh, making list side of me, like the lover of that kind of stuff in me really feels a lot of satisfaction in this, but but it, it still takes like a lot of concentration, keeping all these numbers. I'm sure there are lots of ways to do this more efficiently. I'm sure I'll become more efficient and better at it the more I do it. Right now I'm still learning a lot. Uh, fortunately I have a technical editor that goes through everything before I then, then send them out to the test knitters and then test them out before printing them in the book. So everything is really try to to make sure that there aren't any big like mistakes. I'm sure there will be some some small um, mistakes in the book. Like I think that's kind of inevitable, but um, trying to make sure at least. If I self reflect a little bit, I think the reason why I often pushed the actual pattern writing uh, just forward and kept pushing it and pushing it. Um, was probably because I wasn't very confident. Like I didn't really know how to write knit patterns, even though I've been a knitter for lots of years um, and I've even had my own knit patterns on Ravelry. I think the first one is from like 2013, maybe not that old, 2016, something like that. Um, and, but they are, I mean, now when I look at it, I'm a little bit embarrassed, even though I know they kind of work, but like all the terminology and just trying to make it cohesive, like all these things, I feel like I've come very far with, but I remember the first pattern I 
finally sent to Heli um, to be technically edited. And I was really nervous and felt like, oh my God, I'm such an imposter and this is probably completely wrong. Um, and when I got that first draft back and it was just completely like red text, like so, so many corrections, like the entire <laughs> basically pattern. And that wasn't a surprise, but I'm really, really happy that I got this opportunity and I got to make this book because oh boy, have I learned so much because after that first pattern, then the next pattern, I could sort of see what the logic is behind it um, or how to write a pattern, like how to make it um, in a way that you have just enough information, like not a lot of excessive stuff, but also not too little so that it still makes sense and that it's not confusing and doesn't leave big question marks. And that's like a fine balance, I think. But once I had like that first pattern and the second and the third, like slowly you start to get like the logic behind it and get a hang of it and of course find your own language. So if you, for example, are somebody who maybe have been thinking about maybe releasing some own patterns, I mean, my tip is just to go for it. And I mean, there are freelance technically uh, technical editors that you can hire, or you could even just have um, a bunch of test knitters. Uh, you can maybe ask out on Instagram if people would like to help you out and test in the patterns and they can give you so much feedback. Um, so I think definitely go for it. The only way really, I think, to learn how to write knitting patterns is by doing it <laughs> and maybe not start then with something super intricate, but starts rather with something pretty easy or something you feel pretty comfortable um, like knitting so that you really know kind of what you're doing um, in reality and then so that you can kind of translate that onto paper. I want to quickly say thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this part of the video. Skillshare is an online learning platform and they have over a thousand of creative classes in all kinds of experts in their fields. I've taken classes in creative writing, in film editing, in animation. At the moment, I'm taking a class actually in interior design and interior decoration, or actually I think it's like styling your interior. It's by Emily Henderson. It's called Style Your Space creative tips and techniques for interior design. And that is definitely something I need because we have this huge house now and so much space that still needs a lot of thought and just effort put into it. So it's probably gonna be a pretty long process. Uh, I talked about it in the house tour that I did. Um, I kind of showed the whole house when it's still like undone. So I'm hoping to get some really good tips from this class and I've already gotten so much more the structure and like there was this whole style quiz and just get more words also for what kind of style I really want to make our home be. And of course, Yuki as well, <laughs> not only me. So if there is something maybe creative you'd like to explore or you're looking for some inspiration or just some, you know, energy boost in whatever creative project you have going on right now, I can really recommend Skillshare because they just have a ton of inspiration and interesting classes. If you'd like to try it out, you can click the link in the description below to get a 30 day free trial. So click the link in the description below and you'll get a 30 day free trial to try out Skillshare and explore their huge library of classes. All right, back to the video. I worked on the actual knitting and the patterns from, I started in like September 2021 and I think I was done by like March or April 2022. Um, did all the sweaters and cardigans first and then I did all the accessories. It is now 12th of April, which means in about five weeks I have my deadline to deliver all the material for the book. And oh boy, I have definitely felt the stress uh, in these past weeks, there's just so many small details and so many things that need to be in order before everything is signed off. Also because the book is going to be released both in Finnish and in English. So it just feels like there's always, there's just so many things. <laughs> and with the patterns like those just takes so long time because there's so many like uh, mathematical things you have to see that are correct. And then with the test knitting and Organizing all that also takes time, then trying to just like be active uh, and doing videos and like other collaborations and things that I've that I've uh, signed up for. Thinking about like, is this gonna be the book? Are these the patterns? Like how many can I fit in? So um, yeah, 
I've definitely felt the stress. Once I had all the patterns and the text done, I actually also did all the photos myself for the book. And I really wanted to have photos from different seas and in different locations. So throughout the year, as I was working on this book, I would take photos. And then I did like one really massive big photo shoot in Portugal. I think that was in March, 2022. And I grabbed all the knitwear with me and took a bunch of photos. So a lot of them you see, and also the one here on the cover um, is from Portugal taken there. And um, I really wanted myself to take the photos and then Yuki, my husband took some, and then also my sister took a few. Um, and I really wanted to do that because visuality and photography is such a big part of my whole brand and my creativity. Um, so I definitely wanted to do that because I feel think quite often um, when knitting books are done, they'll have then like two or three days maybe of a knitting shoot or not a knitting shoot, a photo shoot with all the knitwear, um, which of course the upside is that then you can get it very cohesive. You all get it done in one stint, like it's very effective. Mine wasn't very effective because I used so many days on that, you know, here and there, very like kind of sporadically. Um, but I really like also that it reflects sort of the whole year of me making this book um, is really on the pages and in the photos. So then when I had all the material <laughs> for both the Finnish and the English version done, um, then they went to the editors who went through the text. And then uh, the last final piece was Viola Minerva Virtamo. Um, she did the full layout for the book. So, you know, I had, of course, an idea of what uh, I wanted the order to be. And I had also sent her like a mood board and like a feeling like what I want the colors to be like. And she did such a beautiful job in really just absorbing my style. Um, and then we went back and forth, like some small corrections uh, for weeks still, like, you know, oh no, there's a comma there. There needs to be a space here. Oh, that is wrong. Uh, those kind of small things. And that required a lot of patience and a very different kind of work because it wasn't anymore about creating it. Now it was really making sure that everything is correct. And also like that feeling of like, oh my God, like, is this really going to be the book? Is there something that I've missed? Something that I've forgotten? Um, are there any like big mistakes in the patterns? Like what if I've missed out something? Like that was pretty stressful. And I remember um, like thinking about like those really things like kept me up at night sometimes. Like, like, oh my God, like, did I even include like the chart in that pattern and you know, like, there are so many patterns at the same time and so many things in the brain at the same time. So that was sometimes a little bit of a struggle, to be honest. One thing that I definitely struggled with during this whole book process was that it probably looked like on the outside and on my social media channels here on YouTube and on Instagram where I'm normally quite active that I was just doing anything. And I really struggled with, um, you know, on the one hand, really making sure that I put in a lot of effort and make the book the best it can be. Um, also like learning all these new things. And like I talked about, like with the pattern editing and of course focusing on designing and, and all that. Um, and then at the same time trying to keep up my social media channels. So creating content for YouTube and being on Instagram and just thinking of projects. And of course, this is what I do for a living. So I also had to think about that, like how can I sustain myself uh, financially uh, while I do this project? And I think we all know that making a knitting book or books in general is usually not something that will make you a millionaire or super rich. So I also kind of knew that, that this was really, um, I guess maybe I saw really the upside of it, of course, I thought it was really fun. Um, and I really, I think, learned to become a better knit designer really quickly, like much quicker than if I would have just tried to do it alone. So this really book and working with my technical editor um, uh, really, really taught me so much. But, uh, and that was sort of why I did it. And I also thought, you know, having a book is really kind of puts you on the map, like you are a credible uh, in whatever field you are. Like if you have a book, like you have some street credibility, I would say. Um, so that's the reason I really wanted to do it. But I also knew at the same time that it would probably mean that I wouldn't be able to do as many collaborations and maybe courses and things that I would have probably otherwise done. So that was very stressful and it was very, very stressful. Just the feeling of all the time feeling like I wasn't doing enough, even though I was all the time, I was like making a whole freaking book. <laughs> but it felt like if I hadn't, or if I couldn't show anything on social media, 
it felt like I'm not doing anything. And of course that's not true. The book got released in late August. I think it was meant to come out on 18th of August, but then because all of all the things that are happening right now and with like paper supply being low and just all these things. So it got delayed a little bit. So I was really, really eagerly waiting for the book and I finally got it in my hands. And it was so funny because um, I had said to the publisher and we had spoken about like wanting like a pretty small format. So this is pretty lightweight and it's easy to have in your bag. And that was something that I really wanted. Um, I love those kind of like really big, gorgeous, elegant knitting books, but I feel like sometimes they are not maybe so practical if you want to take it on the go or if you're, you know, for example, visiting Finland or Helsinki and you find this in a bookshop and maybe you want to buy it and take it back home, then a really big and heavy book isn't super practical. So I really, uh, uh, wanted to have it like be pretty small <laughs> and then I remember like um, my publisher Ola Maya came and brought it to me and my first reaction was like oh my god like it's so tiny like it's so small <laughs> and I thought like my first reaction was a little bit of a shock and thought like have I made a huge mistake but then fortunately very quickly when I took it in my hands and I started to just go through it and look on the pages it felt it felt so surreal. It felt like oh, it was such a joyous moment. And I feel like it's so beautiful. I love the texture of the paper, like just the tech, tech, no, tactile, tactile, like tactility. That's not a word, <laughs> but you know, like the tactile feel of the paper. Like, I think it's so beautiful. And all the photos, because I have never done photos really for print specifically before, because I edited all the photos myself as well. So I was really nervous. Like, are they going to be too dark? What about the colors? But they are just absolutely gorgeous. So beautiful. I love all the colors that Viola has chosen also for all of these pages here in between and the photos that she's chosen from all the photos that I sent her. So, I mean, that was really, really a big moment and such a moment of satisfaction. It felt like all that amount of work was really worth it. So now it is December, 2022, and it's been like three months since the book has been out. And I definitely feel like um, the book kind of put me on the map. Like here in Finland, like I feel this book has really brought um, me onto like the knit design scene in a sense. Like then I did the video with my <laughs> knitting or when I knitted my uh, wedding dress, um, that got so much media attention. And that was just about the time when I released my book. So I feel like even though I didn't plan it, like that became a pretty good like PR campaign because I got a lot of attention for the wedding dress. And it was kind of perfect because then when I got interviewed like to Good Morning America, Business Insider interviewed me, um, like local papers here, like Ilta Lehti and Helsingin Sanomat uh, interviewed me about the dress. And then it was perfect because then I could be like, yeah, and I have also just released my knitting book. Um, so that was kind of funny um, and became like a very good just timing, like everything just aligned. It's still totally surreal to see photos on Instagram or people sending me photos where they've actually needed something using my pattern. That is one of the best feelings, I would say. Um, one thing that, uh, because we made the book in both Finnish and in English, and um, here in Finland, they have it in a lot of local shops. And um, one thing that has been a little bit of, um, how can I say, like um, been stressing me out is because the shipping costs. So of course, I know that all of you, uh, all of the, my community and the followers are all over the world. And this book, I mean, we ship it or I don't physically do it. Like there's a, like the publisher, they have like the whole web shop and they have like a storage um, somewhere, I'm not sure, but somewhere here in Finland where it gets shipped out from. Um, and the shipping costs because of everything that's happening also in the world right now, they were pretty high. And that is something that I really tried to fight for to get the shipping costs down. Um, it's not really in my control. I'm not responsible for that. I don't really have any say in that. It's not I who make those decisions. But then, unfortunately, we got also the ebook so that there's a digital book so that you can get all the patterns, even though maybe you live very far away and the shipping costs are just like way too high. Now, also, we had um, like there was some kind of mistake and error with DHL and all that. So suddenly like the shipping costs were really, really high, um, which totally shocked me. And I got some messages from people like sending like, oh my God, like the shipping costs are now like two times higher than the book. 
and I've spoken to my publisher about it and they've cleared it off thankfully so now it should be in order so it should be possible again to order this book without like crazy crazy high shipping costs if you want that for maybe a Christmas present and otherwise you can always download the digital ebook version I'll put both the links in the description below but yeah I mean definitely it's also been very very um fun to get so much response and to see people receiving the book and you know liking the book and also thinking about oh what are they gonna cast on or what are they gonna work on but to be honest it's also been um I feel like in a new way it's um like also because my channel has grown quite a lot um I, you know also my Instagram has grown a lot um there's like a new level of responsibility and a new level of um, maybe customer service <laughs> that goes into it and you know I am still only one person even though Yuki's helping me a little bit now with some stuff I'm still only one person who's doing everything um, and of course like all the publishing and the book related stuff is really the publishers who do it like I only in a sense made the book and of course I talk about it and market it but I don't have anything to do with like the actual shipping and kind of the logistics of it so I feel like there's definitely sometimes I feel like there isn't enough of me or I should hire people to help me because sometimes there's so many comments, DMs, questions um, and I would like to answer and reply to everybody but sometimes I just feel like I have to also prioritize you know creating content because that is still something like that is the most important thing for like my whole thing that I'm trying to do here and build my brand to keep that alive and to keep going forward all the time so that's sometimes something that I struggle with something I think I need to think about or how to kind of scale this how to make it sustainable so that I don't get burnt out because I try to do everything myself um, and even like I try to do everything myself and also I struggle sometimes to make something like good enough I always want to do like no but then I want to do it like here you know like super ambitious <laughs> so um that is something that I feel like next year I probably have to think about a little bit more about how to prioritize my time all these things that I think are pretty common when you work for yourself or when you're a you know a creative person or an entrepreneur uh, where you have like really the big responsibility lies on you to get stuff done essentially but that's really it. That is the process of making the book. It took, yeah, almost like a year from that first meeting of my publisher suggesting that I'll make this book to where I have it now here today. And I mean, it also is so satisfying to have like a physical thing because videos and you know the whole digital space, that is something that is not really tangible, but this is very tangible. This is a book. So um, I hope you, found it valuable or insightful or interesting to hear me talk about this whole behind the scenes process if there is something that I didn't mention uh, you can definitely leave a comment below and I'll try to reply to those um, I hope this was um, maybe answered some questions or maybe gave you some more understanding of like all the things that goes into making a knitting pattern book or if you want to make your own knit patterns all right that is it for me in this one leave a comment below if you have some questions uh, if there's something big that i forgot to mention <laughs> otherwise i will see you in the next one take care bye